So we're going to come over here to where it says bots and we're going to hit create bot. Go to signal bot, create bot. Give it a name. This is TBT signals, 15 minutes um, example. And now we're going to go to signals. We're going to set it to signal. In the signals drop down menu, you're going to choose the better traders. That's us. So those are the TBT signals, TBT, the better traders. Exchange. Now you can choose any exchange that you want, but it doesn't work for every exchange. So TBT signals work for Binance, Binance US, Bittrex, Coinbase, Gate.io, Huobi, KuCoin, OKX, um, and Kraken, actually Kraken and KuCoin as well. So a lot of these, not all of them, but a lot of these. So we choose the exchange we want and I'm on the paper trading account. So I'm just going to do that uh, because it's easy and I don't have to risk my real funds. So we're going to choose account, Binance, paper. Great. Now we have to choose our currency. Do we want to use USDT to make a USD bot or BTC to make a BTC bot? So it's going to be the same thing except the market currency is different. So when we're going back over here to the data, the month over month gains, I will say that the USDT bot does perform slightly better. And you've got to be careful. I mean, even here, looking at the performance, there are more total closed trades on the USDT side than there are on the BTC side. That's because while you can make good profits against Bitcoin, when Bitcoin's bullish, watch out because you're going to have to rescue these deals because of market mechanics. If Bitcoin's going up super high and super fast and Litecoin isn't or XMR, XRP, whatever isn't, it's going to fall against Bitcoin. That's an easy explanation as to why. So let's focus on USDT for the purpose of this video, but you can use BTC and there are times where BTC is going to outperform USDT. Next, filters. So max concurrent positions. How many max active deals do you want to use? So, so we want to set it to five, just for the sake of an example. You don't have to set it to five, but that's what it's going to be. Max positions per market. This is different. What this means is that you can have more than one position open at a time. While there's one existing trade open or a bot signal that's open, while it's open, we got another signal to buy. Well, all trading can take that, parse it, make a new bot signal. So you can have two running at the same time for the same market. So that's what that means, max positions per market. Now, if we're set to five, I'm not going to use it. This means that I could have two signal bot uh, positions for ADA and Litecoin LTC and one for Bitcoin and still receive signals for Dash and Link if those are the ones that I have. But my bot won't open up a new position for Dash and Link even though I have five trading pairs in my whitelist because the max concurrent positions is five. Therefore, if I want to have two max positions per market, then it me that means I want to have two ADA at a time. I want to have two LTC at a time, two BTC at a time. You get it? So if I want to have two for all five of the tokens that I've chosen, then we set it to 10. But if you don't, and you just want to set it to one, then there we go. So that means we can only open one Bitcoin position at a time, only one ADA position at a time. That's what this means. We're not going to mess with 24 hour volume minimum, price minimum. Nope, we're not going to mess with that. Now, whitelist and blacklist, this is really cool. So, this whitelist means that we can, the bot will still receive signals for Dash, Dot, EOS, Eth, Link, um, XRP, XTZ, but it will not open them because they have not been whitelisted. So, this is a great way to ensure that your bot's only going to open up positions just for these five trading pairs. Okay? So, that's what that means. Now, here for the entry settings, this is really important. Um, you can set it to a percentage of total balance, which is really interesting. You could actually naturally compound, but it's across your entire account. So that's looking at 1% of all of my USDT that's available. I don't want that. So that's my initial order size. Sometimes it's going to be inflated because of trading fees, but there it is. That's what it is. Entry price deviation, don't touch. 
um, entry order expiration, don't touch. Dollar cost averaging, yes, please. These are our safety traits. Safety one is DCA one. Safety two would be DCA two. The first target price is 1.5%. The second target price is 4.5%. These are the numbers that are have been working for the last over two years. That's just what it is. You can mess with it, but I wouldn't recommend it because you're going against the data. So target quantity, this is where things are a little bit weird. The target quantity is a percentage of the initial entry order, even though we have a fixed amount. So we don't have to type in a number. If I were to type in 100, then it's going to be that exact number. Because we're using DCA and we're buying more twice as much as it goes down, the first DCA is going to be 200%, which is doubling whatever this is. So what's DCA2 going to be? It's not going to be 200%. That's not it. It's actually going to be 400%. Okay? So exit settings, really important. Again, set it to custom. Our first target is going to be set to 0.85. The reality is that we have to take trading fees into account. And Binance, because I know I'm using Binance, they charge about 0.15% in total for trading fees for in, for out. Therefore, I want to make sure that I get my trade closed. Can you set it to 1%? Yes, but it's not going to be 1%. It's going to be 1.15%. So keep in mind that trading fees are a part of this. So target volume has to be set to 100 because I'm selling 100% of whatever I'm trying to sell. But let's say I want to keep some Bitcoin. I want to keep some ADA, Atom, XLM, LTC, whatever. I can actually sell 90% every single time. So I'm always keeping 10%. This is really, really helpful because if you want to be a long-term accumulator of Bitcoin, the reality is that you're going to make a whole lot more in BTC value over time than USD volume. So if you've been accumulating Bitcoin for the last year and you're ready for the next bull market cycle and you've been accumulating, guess what? Your BTC that you've been accumulating over and over with this bot is going to be worth maybe 100%, 200%, 300%, 400% more. If you're looking at some other token, right? Uh, what do we got up here? Cardano, ADA. Maybe ADA is going to be worth 10 times more in the next market cycle. So it might make sense to accumulate more. But that also means that your portfolio is going to be susceptible to that drawdown. So if the value of ADA starts to tank, guess what? All the ADA that you've been accumulating is now worth less. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's not a bad idea, okay? One last thing. You can enable trailing for the last target, but this should always be set to 10% of whatever your take profit target is. So it's going to be 1, or rather 0.1%. What trailing does essentially is that when your take profit target is hit at 1%, then it's going to enable a trailing mechanism. So if the price happens to shoot up higher, it's going to follow at intervals of 0.1% as the price goes up. But that also means that if the price goes up, hits trailing, and then falls back down, guess what? You trail all the way back down. So this could be a double-edged sword. It's Sometimes I've seen it work out beautifully. You make a whole lot more. That would be in bullish conditions. Other times it bites you in the butt. It really depends on the trade, on the position that you take. It's not something that you just kind of go, I'm going to enable it all the time, especially with a lot of money on low volume tokens. It's not a good idea. You want to be careful. Last thing I'll say about this is that you can add another target. You could say, well, I want to take profit at 1% and 2%. And you could say, well, I want to sell 80% here. And I want to sell 20% there. You can do it. I don't have the data to support that. So if you, you know, if you do make more, good, good job to you. But I don't have data to support that. So therefore, I don't recommend doing it. But you can. Second caveat. If you have a low order size, now this isn't low, so I'm 
starting with $237, right, per trade. So that means that 20% of that $237 is going to be about, what, 46 bucks. So that's, uh, that's more than enough. But whatever the second target is going to be, it has to be more than 10 USDT because we're on the USDT market. You have to have more than the minimum amount per trade, okay? So if you don't, you're going to get errors and you won't be able to sell that position. So you're automatically going to keep that profit volume. Now, I'm going to set this to 100% because this is supporting the data. But if we're in a bullish environment or you're bullish on something, you could set it to 80 or 90% and accumulate. But just keep in mind that when you accumulate, that makes your account susceptible to drawdown over time. So if the value of a token all of a sudden drops, you get rugged, essentially. Something terrible happens to one of those tokens, and then it goes down 50%. Guess what? So do all of your holdings as well. So you really have to be intentional about this. You can't just say, well, I'm going to do it because it's a good idea. Have a plan in place, right? You need to have a trading plan and stick to it. Follow it through from start to finish. Like This is stuff that we talk about in the course to help you out. So then we hit save settings like this. And now the bot is ready. 